Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R630 server. In this video, we're going to specifically cover the CPUs and which options we recommend. After that, we're going to start doing uh, other videos. They're going to cover RAM, they're going to cover drives, NVMe, RAID, what uh, different chassis styles there are, uh, how to update your BIOS, how to update the iDRAC, how to do mass updates. Uh, we're going to cover a ton of different things, uh, so click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R630. And specifically, as I discussed, we're going to be covering the CPUs. So let's get rolling. Uh, there are two types of CPUs that this uh, server accepts. It's the uh, Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 or the E5 2600V4. That is an LGA 2011-3 socket. There are two CPUs inside. And I will note, if you want to use the V4 procs, you need to make sure that you have updated your BIOS. Uh, there will be times that someone will try to build one out and they'll run into an issue where they think they have a bad CPU and it's actually not a bad CPU. It's just you actually need to put a V3 in to start, update the BIOS to be able to, uh, to have the capability to use the V4. So uh, hopefully that helps someone out there. Uh, just make sure you update your BIOS, which is good in general. You should just always have your BIOS updated. And actually in this series, we're going to cover that later and show you exactly how to do that in a couple of different ways. Um, as far as uh, what CPUs we recommend, it really kind of depends on what you're looking for out of your R630. If you want something on the low end, uh, there's a couple of procs that we definitely recommend, the E5 2620V3. This is a hex core 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, it's a really um, inexpensive proc. You could put two of them in for not too, too much and have 12 cores and still have a great system. Or you can go a little bit more expensive and get the E5 2630V3. And this is going to be an eight core, also a 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and you can get you know 16 cores out of that with the two of them in there. And that's also a great uh, proc that's not going to break the bank. So that's what we recommend on the low end side. As far as what we consider kind of the, uh, the value procs where you get the most bang for your buck, uh, I recommend recommend the E5 2660 V3, the E5 2670 V3, and the E5 2680 V3. With the 2660 V3, you can get an 8-core proc, uh, excuse me, you can get a 10-core proc. Uh, it's going to be a really, you know, solid proc overall. Um, if you want to go up to 12 cores, you can get the uh, E5 2670 or the E5 uh, 2680. Uh, that'll be a 2.3 versus a 2.5. Both are really great options. If you want something on the high end, which is personally what I kind of recommend, um, I feel like with this machine uh, it's at a really good price point overall for the actual chassis and the components inside and I feel like you can put in two high-end procs you know, to 14 cores, to 18 cores, to 20 cores, something like this. Uh, and it won't be too, too crazy expensive. And you can get a machine that has, you know, 40 cores in it for a couple of grand. To me, that's a really, really great solution out there. Um, and so uh, on the high end, I recommend the E5 2690 V4, the E5 2695 V4, the E5 2697 V4, the E5 2698 V4, the E5 2699 V4. We're going to put all the uh, specs in there as well. But that's going to range from uh, 14 core, 18 core, 18 core, uh, 20 core, and then all the way up to 22 cores when you go up to the E5 2699 V4. So those are all really, really great uh, processors on the high end side. Okay, so now uh, we know a little bit more about what are uh, just the procs that we can use, what's compatible, what we recommend. Uh, I want to actually hop in. I'm going to show you how to remove your old procs, how to upgrade and put in the new procs. Uh, we got our thermal grease here as well, which is one of the main things I want to recommend uh, that it can be an easy step to forget that you got to make sure you put the thermal grease on. So I'm going to grab my ESD glove and I'll be right back. All right, now that I have my ESD gloves, we are safe to open the machine. So I've put on top of the chassis uh, everything that we're going to need in order to do this. Um, I have a tray where we've uh, got two empty spaces to be able to uh, put the CPUs that were taken out. Um, I do recommend putting them right into a tray just so that you don't accidentally break any of the capacitors on the bottom. If you're not planning on reusing them or reselling them or anything like that, it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's one thing that I always say is you can just toss, uh, toss them into a tray and keep them safe. Okay. The next thing that we're going to uh, need is thermal grease here and our screwdriver uh, as well as a rag that we're just going to use to uh, clean the heat sink. So uh, we're going to get rolling right now. All right, I've cleared everything off, so we're good to get rolling. So we're just going to make sure our latch is unlocked, pop it open, real simple like any uh, 
any Delft server you've been in before, nice and easy. So in this series, we're going to cover a whole bunch of stuff. And this, like I said, we're going to just really focus on the CPUs. But I did want you to note if you're interested in, you know, NVMe or how to install your NIC card or you want to put VMware, we're going to be covering all these different things. So I'm really excited to, to show everyone about that. But let's get rolling on the CPUs themselves. Okay, so um, as we mentioned, there's two CPUs. Uh, the CPUs control all the DIMM slots plus a number of other things. But as far as the DIMMs are concerned, they can each control 12 DIMM slots. Uh, and that means there are four memory channels per CPU. Okay, now when we upgrade them, we're going to have to remove the heat sinks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, get our trusty screwdriver here. And we're just going to pop that, all the screws out. Nice and easy, very simple. And you'll notice I'm kind of keeping the uh, the heat sink steady so it doesn't go flying off. All right, so now we're going to lift it straight up. Uh, sometimes the, th the thermal grease will actually uh, keep it stuck down a little bit, but this one doesn't look like it's uh, too, too bad. So it just came uh, up nice and easy. And then uh, one of the things I recommend, and it kind of depends on the situation if there's a ton of thermal grease on there and it's just all over the place I really don't recommend cleaning it up while it's still in the socket because you might bump some off it might end up uh, on the side you might just have little chunks that later somehow end up in your pins and then if they get into the pins you'll see these pins are so fine and uh, so tiny that getting thermal grease in there is a uh, terrible, terrible situation. It could easily damage the whole motherboard and you're not going to be able to get it out not without damaging the pins. It's uh, quite a pain to say the least. But in this case, there's not a ton of thermal grease. So I'm going to go ahead and just wipe wipe it off to start, get it nice and clean. And you can even see just with a little bit that was there, I still got some uh, on the bracket itself. And it's not a, a big deal, but if it's big chunks, that does concern me because you don't want it all over the place. And this actually was still pretty wet. Some of it sometimes is really dry because uh, it's been in there for a long time. All right, now that we have the thermal paste removed, we're going to go ahead and take the latches off and pull the CPU out. So this uh, is the way that you want to do it. This latch right here, you're going to push down and in and it'll pop out just like that. Same thing over here, you're gonna push down and in this direction, and it will pop back out. Um, when you do that, this uh, piece right here, when you come up, will actually release the bracket over it that's actually holding everything down. So now you have free access to the CPU, okay? Now here's where, I, before we pull it out, I really want to emphasize, this is where people you know, damage their, their machine the most often is their when they're taking the CPU out, I see uh, people will drag a corner and it'll just hit a couple of pins. And if you damage these pins, they're just so fragile. Uh, this is the easiest way to uh, to damage your machine. So you need to be really, really careful. Take some extra time when you're doing this and just be safe. And I know I'm, I'm emphasizing this and you know, stressing the point here, but this is definitely the part where you have to be the most careful overall, okay? So one of the things that I recommend, uh, if you look on the sides right here, this is where you have the most surface area. It's the easiest to grab it compared to right here, for instance. So I like to come in, uh, grab it with both fingers here and then just lift straight up, okay? Now, you know, I, I do see sometimes people will kind of pin it to the side right here and then lift up, and that's fine as well, um, but I definitely wouldn't recommend pulling it like this because that's when the corner comes out and will potentially damage these pins. And you can look at these pins. Uh, we'll zoom in right now so that you can really, really see them. Uh, they are, I mean, there's... Actually, I would love to know how many are in there. I'm going to Google that after this video. I mean, there's got to be a thousand plus pins in there, I feel like. It's, there's just so many pins. This is where, uh, you know, you can easily damage it. And if one of those is just off just a little, it throws everything off. And this is actually a good point that while we're talking about it, sometimes people will think that they have bad uh, memory module or a bad memory channel and it's actually that they have a, a damaged pin on their CPUs. Uh, we've seen this quite often where someone's confused that they, you know, they're rotating modules around and the modules will keep working in other slots, but those slots aren't working. And it's actually because we'll tell them, check out your CPU socket and look at the pins and just one or two will be off just a little bit. And, you know, sometimes you can fix them, but it's incredibly difficult because they're so small. Uh, and again, I know I'm stressing the point, but this is where you have to be the most careful. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the next CPU in here. Okay. So one of the things that you do need to note is you need to line up. 
right here and right here okay so just make sure you have everything lined up properly I'm gonna grab it on the sides that have the most and you need to be careful right here as well installing it that your fingers aren't overlapping it and potentially hitting the uh, the pins below okay and so now that we've got it actually installed uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this down and when you close this latch it's actually gonna lock it in right here and then we're gonna put this latch down and get it clipped in and we'll come over here and put this latch and get it clipped in and now I'm gonna go ahead and I go overboard personally on the thermal grease I feel like uh, more is better so I am going to just put a ton of thermal grease on here thermal grease is cheap so to me I will have extras now you do have to be careful you can't go too overboard because you don't want it hanging off the sides um, but I put quite a bit on personally uh, that's the way that I like to do it and then that way when I push the, the heat sink down it'll uh, move around it but hopefully not too much where it is uh, coming off the edges okay so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our heat sink back on so it's gonna be pretty simple we're gonna line everything up and we're gonna just screw these bad boys back in All right, so you can see it was that simple. So we're gonna go ahead and knock out the second one and we'll be right back. All right, so now that we have uh, upgraded both the processors, one thing's always double check, just make sure that your heat sinks are screwed on nice and tight. And really that's it, that, it was just that simple. Uh, we'll put the top back on, call it a day. On our next video, we're gonna uh, focus on the RAM. So you know, please follow the, the rest of the series and click that like and smash that subscribe. And uh, do us a favor, if you are looking to uh, custom build an R630 for yourself, uh, whether that's for you know your business or a home lab or anything like that, uh, we have a ton of R630s in stock, a bunch of different styles of them. If you want the 10 bay, the 8 bay, uh, we'd love to be able to help you out. So do us a favor, email sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Take care.